Hello friends, I'm Juliana D'Souza and I'm a science teacher at St. Felix High School. Recently, I've started using hands-on activities for teaching science that I learned at ISAR Pune. And my experience tells me that it's a wonderful way of teaching and learning as students learn better by actually doing the activities. In this video, I will share my experience of how I taught uniform and non-uniform motion to 9th standard students. I will also be explaining the activities that I conducted along with this session. At the end of the session, children will be able to predict the time that will be required to cover a certain distance in uniform motion. They will also be able to calculate the distance that will be covered in a given amount of time in uniform motion. And at the end of it, they will be able to correlate these two types of motion with their surroundings. So let's begin. Before I started the topic, I made sure that the children were aware of the concept of motion, the different types of motion, the concept of speed, the formula to calculate speed, that is distance upon time, and they were also able to plot graphs. I introduced this topic with a warm-up activity called the maze game. I made the maze by sticking straws on a cardboard as you see here. I instructed the students that the marble had to go from the starting point to the finishing point. Different groups of students competed with each other to prove their skills. After the warm-up activity, I asked the students what made some of the groups win the maze race. I also asked them if the marble moved with the same speed all along the maze and why. So that kept children thinking. Then I introduced the concept of uniform motion with the help of this activity. The car is moving from point A to point B on a smooth surface. It covers 10 centimeters in the first two seconds, 20 centimeters in the next two seconds. That is the car is moving with constant speed and covering equal distance in equal intervals of time. Children performed this activity in groups. I gave them a smooth piece of cardboard, a car and a stopwatch and they recorded their observations in the observation table. And then based on the observation table, I posed a certain questions to them. Like, for example, is the car moving with constant speed? Is it covering equal distance in equal intervals of time? Based on the observation tables, they were able to calculate the speed of the car. They enjoyed the activity as they were also able to answer both the questions that I posed to them earlier. In continuation with this discussion, I introduced the next concept of non-uniform motion. I demonstrated this activity using a piece of cardboard, straws to make the surface rough, a stopwatch and a toy car. The car is now moving from point A to point B on a rough surface. The car covers 10 centimeters in the first two seconds and 15 centimeters in the next two seconds. That is, the car is moving with unequal speed and covering unequal distance in equal intervals of time. The students perform this activity in groups and noted their observations. I then posed the same two questions to the students. As the students were not able to calculate the speed of the car in non-uniform motion, I asked them to differentiate between uniform and non-uniform motion based on these two activities. And now I took the help of the graphs. So I divided the students into two groups and I asked the students to plot the graph for the first activity and another group to plot another graph for the second activity based on the observation tables. Here the x-axis represents time and the y-axis represents the position or distance covered by the car. Let's say 1 cm equal to 2 seconds on x-axis and 1 cm equals to 10 cm on y-axis. Let's plot the graph. We got a straight line that represents a uniform motion. Now let's plot a graph for the case of non-uniform motion. As we can see, the graph for non-uniform motion is not a straight line. We plotted the graphs using geoboards, rubber bands and different colored beads. In case you need to know how to use geoboards for plotting the graphs, 
kindly visit our maths lesson plans. Also, if geoboards are not available, graph papers can also be used. After plotting the graph, we discussed the following questions as what was the difference between the two graphs and why were the two graphs different. I asked the two groups to summarize their graph activities. The children enjoyed these activities as they did it themselves. Moreover, plotting the graph on GeoBoard was definitely fun. At the end of it, the children were also able to answer many questions. They were able to differentiate between uniform and non-uniform motion. They were also able to give me examples from their day-to-day -day lives regarding uniform and non-uniform motions. They also were able to solve some of the numericals and calculate the time taken or the distance traveled in uniform motion. As home assignment, I asked the students to find out the time required to reach the school, the speed of their vehicle in order to calculate the distance between their school and home. I found all these activities were easy to demonstrate in the class and each activity took around 20 minutes. These activities made the lesson more enjoyable and interactive. Moreover, children were engaged throughout the lesson. The concepts were also cleared, so I highly recommend using these hands-on activities for teaching science. The description of the lesson plan will be given in the description box below. You can use the lesson plans and make your lessons enjoyable as well. Thank you for watching.